Autism video series. I'm your host, Matt Williams. I'm very excited for today's guest, Dr. Tara Buck. She is an associate professor of psychiatry and Oxley chair in child and adolescent psychiatric research at the OU School of Community Medicine. She's board certified in both adult and child and adolescent psychiatry. Her professional interests include working with children with autism spectrum disorders and their families. Dr. Tara Buck, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's exciting. So tell us about your practice and the ways in which you serve the autism community. Yes. So I have a dual role, role at the University of Oklahoma. I'm both a an educator and a clinician. So basically I have a private practice at the OU Tulsa Department of Psychiatry Clinic and then I also teach. So we train child psychiatry fellows every year and I provide a lot of supervision for them and other students. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah and I know Oklahoma is, comes to no surprise is very underserved. Mm -hmm. um, there aren't many providers period but especially those who specialize with autism. So how have you tried to inspire the next kind of generation of of physicians? So I think it's really important that we train physicians to not only be competent in treating kids with developmental disabilities, but also be very comfortable and have a passion for these kids. So that's something that I really try to bring to OU and to the trainees and fellows that I work with. One way that I do that is I'm a core faculty member for a program called LEND, which stands for Leadership Education in Neurodevelopmental and Related Disabilities. And this is a really exciting program. It's all over the country, and it's funded by the Maternal Child Health Bureau. And our program in Oklahoma actually is uh, funded and um, run through the OUHSC Department of Developmental Behavioral Pediatrics in Oklahoma City. Wow. And so it's really cool. It's a, it's a team-based approach to training. So we have students, trainees, and faculty from several different disciplines. So it has this interdisciplinary um, framework in the training, and it's an entire year-long training um, specializing in developmental disabilities. So I'm very excited to be a part of that. It's a very exciting program, and we have a, an extension of that program here in Tulsa. Wow. So um, that's a big part of what I do. I also really work to train my child psychiatry fellows at OU so that when they graduate, they feel very confident in working with kids with disabilities, including autism. Yeah, I know a few of our current physicians have come through mm -hmm. your training. Do many of them actually stay in the area, or do they leave the state? Or? We've been very lucky. Actually, most of our trainees who have graduated have stayed in Oklahoma, um, both in Tulsa, Oklahoma City area, and so I hope we continue that track record and continue to train individuals who will stay in the area. Yeah, hopefully. So what does the specialty training in autism, how does that affect? Is it, is it a major difference whether or not you have that background, that training, or... I think it makes a big difference. So in general, child psychiatry is really well positioned to um, receive that extra training because we get a lot of extra training and development. Mm -hmm. So we have a much better understanding of what's normal behavior in kids and what normal development looks like and then what do different um, aberrations in that look like. So kids that have developmental disabilities or even other mental health disorders. Um, and so I think um, we're in a unique position to really train our fellows in, um, in those things, and I think they can be very effective practitioners. Does the language <clears throat> delays make it difficult to, do, to work with individuals with autism? Um, it can be, but I actually find it's just it's, it's exciting, and I think you have to look at it from um, a standpoint of just being an investigator. And so um, definitely a child that can't express you know, how they're feeling internally can be challenging, but many times um, by doing a comprehensive evaluation and by getting information from caretakers and really observing behaviors, um, you can really gather a lot of really helpful information. So for some people, I think it can seem a little overwhelming, but I find it can be very rewarding too, because, you know, to be able to help a child that can't speak for themselves, um, you can tell that you make a big difference in their life when you can intervene. So, so yeah. um, if help for information, uh, make sure you come back and check out part two, where we talk about uh, some of the diagnosis um, kind of evaluations that you do and how that affects treatment.